Hello everyone. Welcome back. Miss Wagers here and we are going to continue with reading how the stars fell into the sky. So we are on lesson seven today. So let's jump right in guys. So we'll get ourselves started. Make sure that you're sitting up straight, that you're focused and you're ready to go. Okay, because again, we're going to have another quick and easy lesson. I know you can do this. So our learning intention. We are learning to use details to describe characters' thoughts and words so that we can compare and contrast the characters' opinions and feelings. So again, we're really focusing on characters again today and thinking about the words that the author uses so that way we can see how characters are similar and how they're different. We know we're successful when we can identify the characters' thoughts and feelings in the text. Use text evidence, of course, to support our answers. That's something we always want to do and then compare and contrast the characters. So let's think about how they are similar and different. So let's go ahead and go to our foundational skills. So we are still working on compound words. And remember that compound words are made up of two smaller words. And so today, focusing on pronunciation, you can use the pronunciations and meanings of the smaller words to read and understand compound words but sometimes you can't figure out what a compound word means from those two smaller words. And so when you're unsure of a compound word's meaning, you can use a dictionary to look it up, and I'm gonna show you how to do that very easily. So let's think about using the dictionary here. So I have the word blacksmith. Well, I know what black is, black's a color, and smith, well, what's a smith? Okay, smith can be someone's last name, Okay, but I don't think that really tells me what the meaning of blacksmith is. So what I'm actually going to do, and you can do this on your computers as well, I just open up another um, tab, a Google search, okay? And I am just going to type in the word blacksmith. And then I'm gonna type in the word definition. And I'm going to hit enter. And then Google, is so awesome that it brings up the definition of the word for me right here. So it says a black blacksmith, a person who makes and repairs things in iron by hand. Okay, so there's someone who repairs iron items by hand. Okay, and actually blacksmiths aren't super common anymore. So that is how I can just use Google very easily to look up the definition of a word. So you don't actually even have to have um, your own dictionary now because the power of the internet Okay, we can just type the word in and type the word definition behind it and it will give you a definition right away. So let's So let's think about the meanings of other compound words. So we have like the word skyscraper. Okay, I know what the sky is. I know what a like how to scrape, like scrape, 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 like we're scraping something off. But how is something scraping the sky? So if you didn't know what a skyscraper is, you might want to use that trick that I just showed you to look it up. Daylight. Well, I know what day is. Okay. And I know what light is. Oh, so daylight must be light in the day. All right. Well, that kind of makes sense. Or like the next word, doghouse. So I know what the word dog means. And I know what the word house means. So together, well, doghouse is a place where a dog lives. And my dog is actually, I was just checking, she is underneath my table right now. So if you hear her, she might be scratching at her legs every once in a while. She's being a little bit noisy, but hopefully you don't hear her. And then we have the word dragonfly. Um, and so I know what a dragon is. I know what a fly is, but what is a dragonfly? So if I wasn't sure what that was, again, that might be one that you need to look up. So let's continue on our way. Next things with these, like we did yesterday, is that we can separate the words into their smaller parts. So again, I split blacksmith between the word black and smith. Then we have skyscraper. We split that one between sky and scraper. Daylight, we sp split between day and light. Doghouse, we sp split between dog and house. And lastly, dragonfly splits between dragon and fly. And we review this because that's what you're going to be doing on your own today for your foundational skills practice. You have to separate each compound word into the two smaller words by drawing a line between the parts. And then again, choose one of those words to use in a sentence. So the words that you have are watercolor, driveway, flashlight, and notebook. 
Okay, and then again, be sure to use at least one of those words in a sentence. Okay, if you want to get creative, try and use more than one of the words in the sentence. All right, so that is going to be your independent practice for foundational skills. We just have one vocabulary word today, and that's the word grumbled. Okay, and that's to complain in a bad tempered but quiet way. Okay, now Squidward, he actually, I think he grumbles a lot. Okay, so our little meme says that he's growling and grumbling. And grumbling is like, oh, you're talking like this, and you're right. Squidward, he kind of just has a grumbly voice to begin with because he's always kind of complaining and bad tempered. Okay, so grumbling is again to complain in a bad tempered but kind of quiet way. Grumbling is not yelling. So here we have a picture to get us started off with. So we have first woman and coyote, and she is handing coyote one of those stars. Coyote hung the star and stepped back to look. He hung another and another, but for each star he hung, first woman's blanket held a hundred thousand more. This is slow work, he grumbled. Okay, so he's not, he's kind of complaining, but he's not like yelling about it. He's like, this is slow work, right? He's grumbling about it. Writing the laws could take many moons, she said, and began humming to herself. Can't we find a faster way and be done? Coyote asked. Why finish? She answered. What is there to do next that is half so as important as writing the laws? So here they are sitting, um, having this conversation and working on putting the stars into the sky. The people will see these laws before they enter their hogans at night. The young mother will sing of them to her child. The lonely warrior crouching in an unknown country will look up and warm himself by them. Writing the laws may be what I do each night for the rest of my life. But Coyote lacked first woman's patience. He loved best to see a job finished. So our stop and think question is, how do you know that first woman was, woman was dedicated to writing the laws for all to see? Think about that. Well, what did she just say? So in her dialogue here, she says, writing the laws may be what I do each night for the rest of my life. Okay, so we can tell that she's dedicated to this because she's going to spend the rest of her life doing it. Okay, she doesn't feel the need to rush or be finished. Like she wants to do this job well. She said she could do this for the rest of her life. So that's really showing that she's dedicated. She's not going to quit. So when we're thinking about characters, remember that the author can convey characters' opinions by having them express their feelings. The author may contrast two characters by showing how their opinions are different, right? Because contrast means to show how people or things are different, okay? So we want to think, how does Coyote feel about writing the laws? Well, let's read these pages again, and I made them a little bit bigger for us. So it says, Coyote hung the star and stepped back to look. He hung another and another, but for each star he hung, first woman's bl blanket held a hundred thousand more. This is slow work, he grumbled. And remember, we talked about the grumbled, so he was kind of complaining, okay? And then it says, writing the laws could take many moons, she said, and began humming to herself. Can't we find a faster way and be done? Why finish, she answered. What is there to do next that is half so as important as writing the laws? So when we're thinking about Coyote, he's kind of grumbling and complaining about it, and he really just wants to get things done, okay? So I'm going to say Coyote's kind of like feeling kind of maybe bored or impatient by this like he wants to do it but he wants he wants it to be done like he's like this is kind of slow work and let's think about um what does this dialogue reveal about first woman's attitude towards the law so what does she think about this it says the people will see these laws before they enter the hogans at night the young mother will sing of them to her child the lonely warrior crouching in an unknown country will look up and warn himself warm himself by them so again, she is showing here, what is she showing? Like everyone is going to see these she's showing. So people will see the laws before they enter their Hogan's. Like, like that's like their homes at night. The young mother is going to sing them to her child. The warrior is going to look up at them and like not feel as lonely or cold because he can look up and see the laws have something comforting to him. And so we also know, as we just talked about, she said that she could spend the rest of her life doing them to writing these laws. So first woman's attitude about the laws is that they're super important and she wants them to be done well, written well. So in our last part of this, thinking about the compare and contrast, we're going to use text evidence to show 
how first woman's attitude and coyote's attitude about writing the laws is different. So first, we said that first woman, she's pretty happy and content being able to do this because she knows that this is very important. So some text evidence that I came up with to support this is that, well, she believes that the laws are important to pass on. She said there's nothing so what is more important than writing the laws in the sky. And then another thing that she said, she believes the laws will help bring comfort to people. So that came from thinking about, um, remember when she said that the people would see them before they stepped into their Hogan's at night and for the lonely warrior and for the mother, she would sing them to her child. So she believes that that's going to be comforting to other people. So those are some reasons that I can give that um, the first woman is happy and content with writing the laws. Okay, she thinks they're important to pass on. She believes the laws will help bring comfort to people. And I could even add more with saying that she wants to do, to do it for the rest of her life. Okay, she doesn't think anything is any more like that's the most important thing to do. Now, then we had said that Coyote, he's impatient. He's feeling impatient about this. So your reading response is to add two details that show that Coyote is impatient. So what are two things from this part of the story that show that Coyote is impatient about these laws that, you know, he just wants to get it done. So I want you to go back in the text and I will include that on your seesaw for you, or you can go back and re-listen to it right now. But think about how is Coyote being impatient about writing these laws? All right, guys, that is all for today. Like I said, it was going to be another quick lesson. I hope you have a wonderful day. Do all of your assignments, listen to your teachers and your parents, and I will see you all next time. Bye.